Queixos, que ricas cotorza a ti. Muchas gracias por venir. Eh, welcome, Shalva Nu. Thank you for being with us today here. Shalva Nu Sada nació en Teherán en 1991. She studied a, a, a course of a cinema verité, which was a, very important for her life. Uh, she was the youngest candidate uh, in being um, selected for uh, the director's uh, fortnight in Cannes. And she's uh, written three uh, uh, short films, and they were uh, her first film debut uh, the, was selected for Cannes. Her films have been presented at Locarno uh, uh, and other film festivals. and. We're very lucky to have her here because uh, her family was evacuated from Kabul uh, just a month ago. So we're very lucky to have her here to be able to talk with her. Uh, the master class isn't going to be about her work, but uh, more about uh, she's going to speak about the the current state of the uh, film situation in Afghanistan. Uh, and at the end of the conversation, she will will have a series of question and answers for the public. Thank you for being here, Shell. Maybe we can start by discussing the situation and the challenges of the cinematography industry in the last 20 years in Afghanistan. Well, um, let me tell you a little bit about the Afghan cinema during the Soviet time, then I link it to the last 20 years. Um, during the Soviet time, from 1979 to 1992, Afghan Film Institute was um, a governmental um, office place and uh, filmmakers, they got funded directly by the state and they had to make propaganda film on favorite of uh, Soviet uh, government, pro-Soviet government in Afghanistan. And that's why we have a lot of films, we, had a, we have a lot of propaganda films uh, from late 70s and um, full 80s and then beginning of 90s. And in 1992, it was very similar to, to present time, to now, because um, the Democratic Republic of Afghanistan just collapsed. And Mujahideen, who we are fighting for um, since 1979, they got Kabul and the president uh, couldn't the, the only difference is that on that time the, pr the president couldn't escape and um, he had to go to UN office and for four years he was in lockdown during the whole civil war in Afghanistan. And then finally in 1996, um, Taliban arrived and ended the civil war, but then they started their, their own government for five years. During all these years, four years of, uh, of civil war and then uh, five years of Taliban, for nine years there was nothing. And uh, a lot of filmmakers, you know, either they got killed, either they, um, they, they immigrated, either they went to asylum, or they were like in Iran and Pakistan living under really bad condition and absolutely they didn't have any chance to make film or even to think about making movies. And then in 2011, back to your question, in 2011, uh, in 2001, sorry, um, after you know, 11/9 and American and uh, international community invaded Afghanistan, um, suddenly there were a lot of money, like uh, tons of money, you know, that we are spending for Afghanistan in Afghanistan, and because of this reason, a lot of NGOs they started to um, uh, shape. And a lot of people, they started to register their own NGOs because there were like a lot of projects 
on certain um, subjects. You know, it was very similar for me to the Soviet time because in, in, like, in the last 20 years, like these NGOs, they never said that um, it's a propaganda film, but in a way it was propaganda film because they received money, let's say, from, they received a very big money from the cultural part of American embassy or other cultural parts of other embassies. And then they had to make movies about women situation or women rights and election and drugs and, you know, like this kind of subjects. And, um, and yeah, so a lot of people, you know, they have this interest to gain money. That's why they became filmmaker. And that was not a reason that, you know, like, let's make film because film is important. No, because money was there. So a lot of people, they started to register their own NGO, their own production, their own production companies. And um, suddenly we had like hundred, you know, like hundreds of filmmakers trying to make these short films or documentaries or... And I think since 2010, um, a lot of films have been made. Uh, with these particular subjects. And some of them, they could go to festivals internationally, uh, but some of them, they were screened in, 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 the, in TVs, in different channels in TV in Kabul, or even in some festivals. But after 2010, and particularly after 2014, because in 2014, um, also like a, a big number of American troops, they left Afghanistan. and. That was kind of, you know, the time that um, a big wave of, like a big number of people that started to immigrate, to immigrate from Afghanistan to go somewhere else. And especially like talents, journalists, filmmakers, artists, like, you know, educated people. And then there, there was not any money that much because, um, you know, for culture, it was never a lot of money to compare in compared to other fields, but still they, they were a chunk of money before 2014, but then after 2014, nothing really. And there was also something about Afghan filmmakers that filmmaking was never like a, for many, for many Afghan artists, for many Afghan filmmakers, filmmaking was never like a career. It was always like a hobby. They always had a job in a TV or in other places, and then they, they had this ambition to, to, to make films with friends and with, you know, with a little money. And even though we didn't have, you know, the, we had a number of short film and documentaries, but the number of um, like an annual production of feature film in Afghanistan in the last 20 years, it was zero, zero. And for me, I was just told you before we, we started the talk that like in the last uh, month, especially when I'm talking to press and press asking me like, what will happen to the artist? What will happen to the filmmaker that now Taliban, even, you know, they said that there is no, they, they said it directly that there is no space. There is no space under the Sharia law for, for artists and artists, they have to change fields, you know. And I got a lot of questions from press that, but what will happen to the artist? And I'm, I'm ashamed to say that we didn't do that much in the last 20 years. So I'm not worried about that, you know? And yeah, and I think like, um, um, things actually started after 2014, like from 2015 to, to, to 2021, we had like four, five, six titles of, of feature films that they mostly were made by Afghan filmmakers that they lived abroad but they were interested to Afghanistan and they traveled forth and back to Afghanistan and they had these films and these films went to biggest festivals like to Cannes, to um, Berlinale, to Venice, to Itfa, to Hot Dog. And, and I mean, we had representative uh, from Afghanistan on these festivals, you know, but if I compare these productions with uh, these numbers with all the opportunities that we could have or we had in the last 20 years, I think that the, 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 the speed of Afghan cinema was super slow. And, but the only hope was like we, we are on a line and we could go forward. And I think we, we are on our way to going forward, but the, the, but the walk took a very long time and you know, we needed more time. But now I think, um, 
yeah, now I think... Um, ah, let me tell you something else. Um, there is also something about Afghanistan um, image in the, in, the, in the industry, in the, in the world cinema, because um, there are many, many films about Afghanistan made by you know, international filmmakers, Iran, like neighboring countries, India, like, or even Hollywood or European productions. And in my opinion, not as a filmmaker, just as an ordinary person from Afghanistan, they're very bad films. Even though some of them they got you know they got um, admired by by big festivals they they won awards but when you see them as an Afghan audience they are just bad films they are very they just sto stay on surface they are talking about cliches all the time you know and they are giving the same they are reproducing the same kind of image that the world already know about Afghanistan so there is nothing fresh or new there and. The, the very sad thing about this for me as a filmmaker is these movies stand as reference even for Afghan artists, even for local Afghan filmmaker. Because of many reasons, I don't know, we are not really aware of the importance, we are not really aware of importance of our own stories. And I think we, we don't have the confident with, you, you know, we don't have the confidence to, to share our stories. And that's why we are always looking at those films as reference. And we are just reproducing the same thing. So with the money from NGO, with, uh, you know, with, with, the, with the filmmakers, don't take the, the job of filmmaking as an as a, as a, as a official career. Like with many reasons, you know, we couldn't, like the, the, the image that we produced in the last 20 years was not really interesting. And I think, I think if there is any any hope for for Afghan cinema, it will be now because now, um, even though a lot of artists, a lot of filmmakers, they have stayed in Afghanistan, they couldn't, they didn't have any chance to 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 go out. But um, a big number they got evacuated. And um, one of the big problem in Afghanistan was when, like whenever you talk with Afghan artists, it was that we are complaining about money, that there is no money and there is no film industry in Afghanistan, and um, and I think like um, now that they are not living in Afghanistan, I think it's a very good time for them, for us to look to Afghanistan with a distance, and you know like to get um, integration integrated with the, with the society that living now and um, yeah and try to connect us to European film um, industry and um, yeah and get the time and uh, and think about Afghanistan I am hopeful in that sense that if we move maybe in the next 10 years we have more Afghan films than we had in the last 20 years with all this doors that are open now. In the light of the current events, as you said, a lot of um, evacuations were like possible. So I would like to ask you, what do you think are the like responsibility of the funding bodies, like international funding bodies, to for, for like your colleagues, for uh, Afghan filmmakers in like Europe or what is the responsibility in the future of the Afghan filmmaking made abroad? Well, you know, like mm, there was one thing about this evacuation thing that, well, let me tell it like this. In Afghanistan, you know, Afghanistan was number one corrupted country uh, in many uh, statistics. And we had three governments since the last 20 years and three of them were corrupted, corrupted as hell, like really damaged. And they didn't care about culture, they didn't care about art, they only cared about power and money. And um, we had, even though like in cinema and culture, you know, no one cared or no one, you know, it, you could not really find a lot of money in culture in compare of other fields, you know, still we had this cultural mafia in Afghanistan. And that we are like these 20 people or 50 people that they were doing like festivals, even though we didn't have any that much, uh, that many movie production, you know, but we had like many, many, many festivals. 
that they go to first edition, second edition, and then it was caught, and then an, a new festival with subjects like, um, I don't know, soldier film festival, about police, you know, about national army, women film festival, young film festival, animation, like all kind of film festival. And then in all this film festival, it was only these 50 films that circulating from one festival to another, and then the same people giving award to the same people, so it was a it was a circus. It was a joke, you know. But um, it was very important because in Afghanistan, like uh, from the culture people, people, you know, we do not we didn't really talk about this stuff. We accept it as it was. And if young filmmakers they wanted to get recognized, you know, as a filmmaker, they had to find a way for themselves to enter to this mafia. And many filmmakers, they did that. And the ones who didn't, they were outsider. And they never get recognized as a filmmaker. You know, they were never invited to any film festival. They didn't have the title of filmmaker. They were not welcome in, in, in gathering or parties or whatever for filmmaking, you know. And they were invisible. And the same thing with evacuation happened, that um, when the evacuation happened, they were like list, they were peoples, that they were in charge of list. And then they had to fill this list with names. And particularly, some of this list dedicated to artists. But the artists who couldn't speak English or didn't have international friends, and we are not part of this mafia, they were left alone in Afghanistan because no one cared about them. And the list got filled with families and relatives under the name of artist. And you know, they got evacuated, as easy as that. And that was very sad for me, because I was in the, I was in the, when, like on 24th of August, I was in the, when I, after 72 hours, when I, um, when me and part of my family, we could go, you know, we could finally pass to American um, checkpoint. We, we are taken by French soldiers to French compound at the airport. And then I saw like a lot of people that I didn't know them at all. But they said that they were there because they are artists. And then I had, at the same time, I received like phone calls and messages and emails from my classmates or people I knew, you know, or people, even people I didn't know. And they were asking me for help. And that was really a sad moment because uh, I was powerless and I couldn't help. And even part of my family, they stayed in, in my apartment. And um, I think now, you know, for example, we have a lot of local artists. Like, uh, let's not talk only about cinema, but also people in music. A lot of local singers, they live, they don't live even in Kabul. They live all around Afghanistan in other provinces. And in Kabul, at the moment, we have press. So Taliban are in front of cameras of many journalists. But in other provinces, there, are, there is no press. So Taliban are very harsh and very, you know, very tough with, with people. And they are killing, they, they kill like local artists in Badakhshan, in north of Afghanistan, in other provinces. And this, you know, even this news never ended in the, in, in the press because no one from, no one from international press knows this these local artists, you know? So I think there are many people that they left in Afghanistan, the, the real vulnerable and fragile one. And um, we are still thinking like to find a way, not only me, but also other people, you know, tr trying to find a way for, for, for these people. But of course, yeah, it's, it's very difficult because we are talking about a big number. And it's not only like artists or it's also like women, you know, people working on, working for uh, like um, for women women right defenders or uh, like journalists like other other kind of people so still even though like a lot of people they got evacuated but many more they have left in afghanistan and so far like i'm in contact with afghanistan 24 hours since i left and um, you know people don't have any hope about they don't see any future to live under uh, Islamic Emirates, and everyone is thinking to leave. That's why there are many queues in front of like borders in Pakistan, in Tajikistan, in Iran, and uh, um, everyone just want to live. Life is very difficult. They don't have access to their bank accounts. Even I don't have access to my bank account because even though I have like um, the card, the Mastercard, but the central bank is is banning. And um, 
yeah, and then people have to make a very long queue, like stand in the sunlight for hours just to get like a few uh, bucks from you know from the bank, and um, it's just like a um, yeah. And and Taliban are just every day they are making a new rule, um, and their mentality is very clear. Um, for me, I don't know why it's not clear for uh, for some people, you know. And well, I think I know this is like pure politics. Um, now I'm a little bit irrelevant to w your question, but let me say this because I think it's important. I think this is pure politics that um, there is this idea that there's they are saying that um, Taliban have changed or they're talking about this moderate Taliban. This is not existed in real world. Taliban is a terrorist group and they will remain a terrorist group and a terrorist group can never be changed. And I think this is pure politics that countries, governments, they are saying that we have to make conversation, we have to give them a chance, you know. This is just, uh, for me, this is, I, I just love about this because like no one with brain can can say this or can believe this, and I think their point of view, their their opinion about women, about artists, about even you know not women, but even even about men, about human, you know, it's it's so clear they're anti-human, and um, yeah, I hope I answer your question. Well, I was uh, listening to you. I was thinking about uh, you contact. You've been in contact with Afghanistan for like the last days, and I was curious about the artistic scene right now in in Afghanistan with all those people left behind, your colleagues, filmmakers, colleagues, musicians, artists, and if you could go further into detail about those uh, artists and also what's the situation, the educational status in Afghanistan, like in filmic or artistic, if there have been uh, any film schools, is if they have been like uh, funding bodies helping film schools, or if you could go further into detail. You mean in the, in the, in before, yes. you mean? Yeah. Well, there was one address, like one uh, faculty of fine arts in, in Kabul University, where they had like different departments, and one of these departments uh, was dedicated to cinema, it was in the beginning. It was cinema and theater, but then later they separated. So it was like fully for 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 cinema. And I was a student there in 2008. And um, after three semesters, I left it because I found it very boring. And uh, I found it really like um, you know, it was just such a waste of time because the teachers they they had no idea of cinema. They had no idea of. Uh, you know, how you should make film. And I knew a lot of people, a lot of students, that they graduated after four years or five years, and they couldn't even hold a camera. You know, they couldn't even make a film. So there was not, um, there was nothing like a practical filmmaking. It was just reading and memorizing all these huge texts from Iranian books, you know, and from uh, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, nothing was new. And um, yeah, so it was only this, and then, um, there were some workshop. I mean, despite of all disappointing stuff, there were also some good stuff. Uh, one of them, it was this French workshop called uh, Atelier Varon, and I was a participant there in 2009. They were in Afghanistan since 2002 or three, and they 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 did this uh, short term three months workshop in um, in in Kabul uh, for young men and women, and the focus was on cinema verite, direct cinema, and um, yeah, and, and, and they did like different workshop in different years. I was in the last year, yeah, I was in the last year, and the, the festival, the, 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 uh, the, the, the workshop ended because my teacher, Stefan Blanche, he got killed in a suicide attack in 2010 in his guest house. He was staying in an Indian guest house, and um, there was uh, yeah, and uh, and then the, they did one more uh, one more round of festival because my teacher came to Kabul to do to finish this round, but then he couldn't. But then his colleagues from France they came to Kabul and they they finished that round. And since then, you know, it was just finished. But in this um, in, in in under this atelier Varon. Uh, umbrella, um, I think more than like 25 or 26 short documentaries have been produced that in my opinion, they are the best of 
Afghan cinema in the last 20 years. Because even though, you know, like the, I mean, for me, those three months, they are the only academic, um, uh, academic background in my career so far, you know. But it was very important for me. And for me, it was kind of turning point because everything was so simple, you know, and the definition, like everything was so simple. But it was very important, and I, I and I think like we learned the basic of cinema documentary there. And even though when I graduated from there, I never made any more documentaries. For some reasons, I was in love with fiction cinema, but I was also in love with cinema verite. So I tried to use like um, this observation and this um, and this attachment to reality and truth to to into my films. I think I was yeah. I, I see myself like a free daughter of uh, cinema verite, <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that we are. Their role was very important um, in terms of you know training um, young filmmakers, and I'm really like uh, I have a lot of respect for for them and for what they did in Afghanistan because there we are, despite of other NGOs and other places, you know that they wanted to make money with these workshops and with this making festivals and making films and stuff they were really uh, like uh, came to Kabul and taking the risk and uh, yeah and and train this young young filmmakers I think in my opinion they are really um, very important like super important in the in, in the last 20 years in in Afghanistan so we could be talking about a new generation of filmmakers we could be talking about a new generation yes. of filmmakers uh, now, these students uh, from, I think we were like 20, 20, 22, or 20, 25 maybe, and uh, they were all a spread all around, you know, like in, within the last years, we were all a spread in different parts, and it was me who stayed in Kabul, and then I think th three, four more people in Kabul, and now with this evacuation, they also got evacuated, but one of them, one of us, he stayed in, in, in Kabul, and he refused to come back because he didn't have any family, and uh, he thought like it's, yeah, he thought that he doesn't have responsibility regarding other people, so he, he will stay there. But I don't know, because um, I don't know if he wants to make any film or stuff, but um, yeah, but I think um, even though so far the students of Atelier Varon didn't really make a big career since then, but I think they learned something very important and they're gonna use that in, in soon future, hopefully. Uh, I recall that uh, we were talking about production, but also in our previous conversation, we were talking about the archival politics. And I, I found really interesting the decisions of uh, not making the archive public. So maybe if you could talk about that. Yes, um, you know, the part of um, archive, Afghan archive, was um, kept in the national TV, and then a part of it was uh, kept in the Afghan Film Institute, and um, and then a part of it was, is, was in national archive, and um, like some years ago, the president of that time, Ashraf Ghani, he decided to uh, to move the archive from Afghan film to presidential palace because he was saying that archive is uh, kept under not a very good condition in Afghan film and uh, he had this idea of keeping archive in his palace close to him <laughs> and um, yeah and this made a very big uh, discussion in, in Kabul especially among people involving in culture mm, you know by this act even before this access of artists, not public, but artists or filmmakers, it was very difficult to, to access to this, uh, to this archive. Myself, I had the experience of, um, I, I, I wanted to use this archive for my, um, my movie, The Orphanage, some years ago before I, you know, during, uh, I was doing research. So I knew that there was a film, a documentary about the same, the real orphanage, the actual orphanage in 80s, and I wanted to, just watch that film. But then I had to run after paperwork for one year, one full year. And, you know, like just going from cultural ministry to Afghan film, from Afghan film to national TV, from national TV to some, and it was just, I was like a ball, like a football ball, you know. 
And it was really tiring, you know, and many people, they didn't have energy. But this was very important for me to watch that film as a reference. So I did this one year thing, one year ran marathon. And um, yeah, and then after I was, invite, I was invited to a room uh, where I could see this movie with the supervision of two other people from two other people who worked there. And it was very difficult because they didn't let me take picture and they didn't, you know, and I had to, there was a logo of the orphanage that I wanted to take picture. They didn't let me and I had to draw it. I had to stop the, the, the film and draw it. And my drawing is really bad, you know, so. <laughs> And yeah, I had to draw this, and um, and and I, even though I asked them that, I said to them that I'm not using this. I'm making a fiction film, and this is a documentary. It's only for my research. They said to me like, even if you want to see it outside of the TV, you have to pay it, and it was very expensive. It was like five thousand rupee all per minute, which is like um, seventy dollar, um, eighty dollar per minute. And the film was like 40 something, it was impossible for me to get it. But even on that time, like, um, you know, having access to this, it was very difficult. But then when they moved the archive from Afghan film and from National TV to Presidential Palace, it was even more difficult because it was in Presidential Palace and then new more paperwork was added to this. I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't visit the archive in Presidential Palace myself. But some people they did, and they said they 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 couldn't like they they tried, but they couldn't because it was very complicated. And now, and this is a big question: what will happen to archive? Because Taliban, they're very clear. They're saying that you know, like filmmaking is not uh, is not allowed. Even though I don't understand why they're saying that, because um, um, like Taliban, they you know themselves, they're using cinema to make these propaganda films. They are using the skills, the language of cinema to, 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 to pitch them and their mentality. And they're very successful on that, you know? Because I was watching these movies of them for many years. I was following, I opened the website and watching these propaganda films, like two hours, three hours films. And they were very successful on what they wanted to do. So I have no idea why they, they're using cinema, but cinema is allowed for them, but it's not allowed for others. And uh, with this mentality, I don't think that they see any importance in archive. And uh, just to make it even more clear who they are, I think um, archive is in danger. And uh, they, they, they burn part of it in 90s, in beginning of 20s, actually. And they can do it again. And, and there was a, 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 a project to digital, digitalize archive I think uh, they did it like 40, 50 percent, but this never could uh, could could end. And uh, yeah, and I, I don't really understand, you know, because um, I don't really understand what was the purpose of keeping archive not for public, because this doesn't make sense, you know, like a students, like people, curious people, like everyone should have access to archive and they can see a lot and learn a lot, especially in Afghanistan, like in the last 42 years, we have a lot of moments in the history that um, they are just going to repeat themselves again and again and again, you know? And I think it's very important for people, for Afghan people to have this knowledge and to have this imagine, Im image of, um, of the last, um, you know, something, years of history in, in Afghanistan. And, but no, I, I think archive is something, in Afghanistan, ar ar archive is something very political. And uh, even though they have no idea of um, the importance of it, um, they keep it. Um, they keep it as a treasure. You know, they keep it like a, they kept it as a treasure. They kept it, and they, they and they wanted not no people have access to it easily. And now it's uh, Taliban. They are in presidential palace, and um, I saw in the TV in a reportage that archive was under very good condition with the right temperature in the shelves, you know, in a, in a room that was built for, for archive, which was not the case in Afghan film or um, national TV. Um, and uh, yeah, but I don't know what will happen to this. Uh, so far, there is no news about this. I hope Taliban, they don't know about it, <laughs> except if someone tell them. And like, 
looking forward, like in the next couple of years or five, ten years, as you were foreseen uh, before, um, how do you think the Afghan cinema made, made abroad uh, will change in terms of aesthetics and themes? Well, I think, as I said before, I think this will be, I mean, if I want to, because at the moment everything is just like, um, you know, um, everything is just like all over the place. And if I want to see a good thing among all this mess, I think it will be this um, imaginary future for Afghan cinema that might shape in Europe or out of Afghanistan because of this evacuation thing. That now many filmmakers, many artists, they're out. And this is the first time for many of them, this is the first time in life that they're out. And you know, they 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 can they have this opportunity to see, to look at Afghanistan from a different, fresh point of view. And I think with the time that they have here and with the possibilities and you know. I think it is very possible that they, like a new wave of cinema, let's say, will shape in, in, the, in the next 10 years, maybe, or 15 years. Because, of course, I mean, this will, ne will never happen immediately because a lot of people, you know, they got evacuated in France, in Germany, in Denmark, in other countries. And first they have to learn these languages. Then they have to find their place in the society and it easily it will take like four or five years to integration yeah and um, I think then after that it's time to okay let's maybe I can make film maybe I can make my art how does it work what is the system um, maybe I can get help from this institute maybe ah oh, there is a fund there maybe I can use it you know this because this system like a healthy system was not existed in Afghanistan and even like a bad financial system was not existed in Afghanistan either. You know, so in terms of money, it was always this idea for Afghan filmmakers, even the one, even the ones who didn't live in Afghanistan, who live, you know, in, in Europe. There was always this idea around Afghan cinema that filmmakers should make small movies with little money, with the crew of friends, you know, just something rock and roll. Why? Because we don't have a film industry, because um, filmmaking is not our career, because we are not enough brave to take the to, to, take, to take the challenge and to you know finance, find ways to finance our movies and dream bigger. I think this is something that indirectly the world cinema is telling also to countries like Afghanistan with no cinema industry, that they always have to be little, you know, like don't dream, don't dare to, 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 to dream something bigger. And I just don't like it, even though I don't believe that the film should be really expensive and, you know, I don't believe on this. I think the content is important and the content will direct the director and producer to make the best product. But I don't like when there are rules, when there are like a, or even for the genre, for the content, you know, like, for example, like like filmmakers from Afghanistan, from Syria, you know, from Iran, there they all there is always this expectation for them that they have to make films related to politics or related to important subjects or related to you know current situation of the country or repro reproduce the same kind of image that uh, the world expect from from Afghanistan from these countries. I I'm not agree. I think like I I'm interested to make. Now I'm I'm working on a romantic comedy since two years, and I'm gonna shoot it next year. And I think like this is not irrelevant. You know, we can make a comedy from Afghanistan because life there is really a comedy, especially now with this situation. This is a pure comedy. It's like one 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 way is tragedy, but the other the other round is is, is comedy. And these two, you can never separate this together. You know, and I think like um, with other genres. Afghan filmmakers can tell their own stories in a better way, ignoring those bad references, you know, and just trying to, you know, to to think about their stories. And because I'm thinking about like, um, I'm thinking about like 
Afghan cinema, but of course this Afghan cinema is not existed now. But I'm really, yeah, I'm really dreaming about one day that Afghan filmmakers can, you know, feel confident with their stories, with our stories, and just make films that they are so relevant to the culture, to the audience, you know, and they, they really carry the values in, in Afghan society and Afghan people can feel proud watching them and, you know, not just be ashamed or, or get angry that, oh, this is another, another film about Afghanistan and get disappointed. I think it's important that, yeah, I think it's important that Afghan filmmakers get this knowledge and understanding about their culture and be proud of it because Afghanistan is really rich in terms of culture and in terms of, you know, stories and tales. And uh, it's really sad that the world doesn't know Afghanistan and it's even more sad that the artists, the Afghan artists, don't know their own country. So I think part of it can happen now with this evacuating artist in Europe with the opportunities and all open doors. I think there's a, like a, like a beautiful, um, like a beautiful challenge. Uh, now looking at that distance, like to renew languages, to re to like critically revisit uh, the filmmaking made in in Afghanistan. I think there's like a beautiful challenge out there. Uh, me gustaría abrir el turno de preguntas. I would like to open up uh, the QA for or interact with our invited guest. So whoever's got a question, please raise your hand, and uh, they will give you microphones. I hope you can hear me, yes? More about the romantic comedy you're working on. You don't want to know about this. <laughs> Well, um, you know this romantic comedy? My purpose, I was working on this project like since two years ago, and I, as I said, the plan was to finish it, um, to, to sh go to shooting next year, and the final film uh, could be finished on 23. And I, my purpose on that time was to make a film about present time in Kabul with the life of middle class. But present time obviously was so fast for me to catch. So now it's not a present time anymore because in present time, Taliban's are there. And in my film, Taliban's are not there. So, but still, you know, I'm thinking because for me as a, as a filmmaker, like in the, last, in, the, in the last month, it was a really like a big question, you know, like uh, because I try to make it really short and excuse me if I don't make sense because my head is just full of uh, all kind of things. But there are some moments with things in Afghanistan, with part of my family left in my apartment, with my friends, with, you know, like with all general condition, I am questioning the power of cinema and I'm questioning my career. And I'm questioning if I am more useful making film or if I'm more useful going back to Kabul and joining the women on the street. So I have this, you know, this big question for me, where I can be more useful. And there are sometimes some hours that I'm really down and negative and I think like cinema is too small and the change through cinema takes so much long and I want change because I saw the change in Kabul like this. Like next day it was very good and then the, the day after, you know, Taliban, we are just in my street. And um, so, but now, now I'm positive and um, Answering to your question, I think it is important to make a film about the last 20 years in Afghanistan, because in the last 20 years, you know, we lived under the flag of democracy. Life in Kabul was much different. And for middle class, for women, we had a lot of opportunities, even though on the work, in the university, in families, we receive violence, discrimination, you know, like all these things that happen also other parts of the world, not only in Afghanistan for women. But um, in this film, I am uh, focusing on a TV channel in Kabul where I worked. I, I got my first job there. I worked there for five years. I was a producer of a cooking show 
which I hate because I hate cooking. Now I like, but that time I hate. And I wanted, I was just this woman, you know, like got this, my first job in this TV and I wanted to go to a music show, like I wanted to be the producer of biggest show, but I was underestimated because I was a woman and I'm a, and I was a small woman, you know? So I, will, I, have, I was stuck with that cooking show. And in this film, I'm talking about the TV, about like a female uh, camera operator uh, who is stuck in this cooking show thing and she's dreaming to go to the news. And finally, after an accident, she goes there and she met a man there. And he's like the, the most recognized journalist in, in, in the TV. And they go together to Kabul to cover all kind of news and they fall in love, of course. And we have the first kiss in Afghan cinema history <laughs> gonna happen in that film. So yeah, it's real. I think it is a, you know, it is a, it is not like a cheap comedy for me. I think it is actually, in my opinion, it is a very political film because this is the, I mean, as far as I know, this is the first time that we are talking about Afghanistan in a romantic comedy genre, you know, and Afghanistan is usually defined by red, not by pink, you know, but this film is very pinky. But on the other hand, I think it is important, especially now for me as a filmmaker, I need more hope and I need to laugh, and I need colors, and I, and I need pink now, you know? So I will be very glad to work on this project as soon as possible, and I think for Afghan audience, and also for like international audience, it's also important to see a little bit about Afghanistan, a little bit about the culture, because yeah, despite of all ugly things, there we are also beautiful things that I think we need to keep it in record, and memorize it and appreciate it. So, yeah, I'm gonna talk about all this, but you have to wait. <laughs> okay, uh, I know that the situation is hard and it can change in a matter of days, but I would like to know your personal opinion about the future of cinema in Afghanistan in the following years? Well, I think the situation in Afghanistan at the moment is really, is really hopeless, but I also believe that Taliban cannot, um, cannot keep Kabul for a very long time because people are changed and women are changed. You might see footages from demonstrations in Kabul and women are just at the front line and it made me really proud and, um, and jealous also because I'm not there. But I don't think that, you know, these people, they are not people from 90s. They are changed and they have an idea of uh, how life is, you know, in the world and they, they, they cannot minimize themselves that much. I don't believe that Taliban can keep Kabul for a very long time. But on the other hand, you know, if I compare it to, for example, um, Islamic Republic of Iran, like to Iranian revolution, they also didn't expect that they uh, stay longer, but they uh, stay until now, like 42 years, you know, so this might also happen. Um, but I think my, my, own, my fear is I don't believe that Taliban, like my personal opinion, I don't believe that Taliban can keep Kabul, but my fear is that the civil war starts. And that's like the worst thing, worse than Taliban, because at the moment Taliban is, not, is only like one terrorist group, but in Afghanistan there are more than 20 um, registered terrorist, um, terrorist groups from Uzbekistan, Muslims from China, from Chechen, you know, from Iran, like from Pakistan, from all over the world, Afghanistan is the house of terrorists with this irresponsible act of America now, an international community. So I think soon, and there are a lot of conflicts between the Taliban themselves, but also between these terrorist groups. So now American, they want to put highlight on ISIS to, to make people scared to say that ah, ISIS, they are the real danger. We have to get united with Taliban to fight with them, you know? So even though now Taliban taking um, Afghanistan, the suicide attacks and explosion not gonna stop. They gonna continue, happen more, and then the responsibility will fall on, on ISIS or other groups. And I'm really afraid that another, you know, like a civil war will happen in, in Afghanistan. And especially now that airport is not functioning really, it's not open to public. 
and uh, there are people that they don't want to live there. They, they, are, they are stuck, and I think everyone should have the right to move wherever they want. And many people that are stuck there, they have no chance. And uh, yeah, my biggest, my biggest fear is, is the civil war because, yeah, with Taliban, maybe, you know, a lot, a lot of minimizing, but it's still there are some spaces that people can use for doing demonstration, for, you know, I mean, nowadays, now, like right now. But uh, yeah, but with civil war, it's just like a, and we had this experience of civil war for four years in Kabul. It's like a door-to-door -door fight. It's like, you know, people coming to, even though if you don't go to the street, people coming to you. So it's really like um, a lot of killing. And I'm, I'm afraid, I, I'm, I hope that this won't happen. And about your question, what will happen to the cinema? I think I explained that, didn't I? Like, um, probably the filmmakers that they are in Afghanistan, I don't believe, I don't believe that they have the opportunity to make films, maybe some documentaries. I don't know, I've not heard about anything, but maybe it's too early also, because at the moment people are struggling with surviving, so it's not time for art or cinema. But maybe if there will be any film, it will be like these documentaries with mobile, you know, taking filming situations and, uh, yeah, but, and, and the filmmakers that they are outside, they're also busy with integration, with, you know, with this, applying asylum and stuff. So I think now, if there is any film about Afghanistan, it will be by Afghan filmmakers who were, uh, who left Afghanistan before. And now they have a passport from, I don't know, like other countries and they are more settled, you know, and they, yeah. And, uh, if there is any production of films in the next years, it will be these Afghan filmmakers in abroad that they're gonna, they're gonna make it. The other filmmakers inside and the ones who got evacuated newly, it will take time for them to to have the possibility to, to make a film. Yeah. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, we had uh, in our Asian Film Festival Barcelona, we had two of your future films, Wolf and Sheep and The Orphanage. No? Well, uh, thank you for being here because it has been very interesting what you were saying. And uh, well, I wonder about many, many things because all of a sudden, Afghanistan existed, appeared. No? We have Afghan films since the, the, the film, since the festival started in 2011. And people were watching these films as a very exotic thing, or, well, this is Afghanistan, it's a small country. And nowadays, all of a sudden, the map is a different one. Afghanistan is in the center of Asia, in Central Asia, and all of a sudden, people become aware of that country. I mean, it's no more, no longer uh, a country where you had uh, the Americans, which were there since 2001. But all of a sudden, people wonder about the history of the country or for the last 50 years, you know. And you think, uh, well, this is on a way, it's very important because it happened to be. And all of a sudden, too, you saw how in the whole world, none of the embassies representing Afghanistan were, uh, 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 an, where um, the country itself outside the country, you know, all the embassies, all of a sudden, were, were we are not representing Afghanistan. Afghanistan, the country changed its name. It is just really a very important thing. All was collapsed, the, sin, the, the system from the outside world, from the Afghans represented in the embassies, no embassies had receiving or were receiving the, the money, which were, you know, coming from the United States, which the whole system is a very incredible one. I mean, we don't know exactly what's happening there, but when you see all the embassies collapsing around the world, all the Afghan embassies, all the ambassadors, all the personnel just in the embassies, I think this is a very important story. You know? This is on one side, on the other side, you know, the National Museum of Afghanistan in Kabul, the project was born by a Spanish architect, uh, Antonio Forrester, and all of a sudden he had completed the whole project, the whole story for five years, 
and that was finished on July, and that disappeared too. I mean, that is a story. And the, the other story is the evacuations that have been happening in the country with the Soviet invasion, which were cruel evacuations, and the evacuations now. These are two, three things, different things, but they are really giving another image of the country. I would like to know if you think uh, from outside, you know, we have a vision of the country, and what are they, uh, these filmmakers who remain in the country because they could not go outside or they didn't want to go outside? Well, it, ha it will happen the same that happened in many countries when people stay, then they will try to, to realize how they can do cinema, uh, you know, through comedy or through to show what's happening because in the end, you know, really reality becomes imposed. But please, I would like you to explain a bit this because uh, the, some uh, filmmakers which are in Europe from Afghanistan, some, they were not able to develop. The ones who were children, and they uh, evacuated with their families to Europe, were first to Iran, from Iran to Australia, or to, uh, to, to the Denmark, which was the other country that received this. They were not able to come back to the country. They were not able to come back also doing a, a film with all their experiences. I don't know what's going to happen with all mm -hmm. that. Sorry about all this. No, no. I think, um, you know, Afghanistan, yes, as you said, Afghanistan is in the center now, but this will be very temporary. You know, soon Afghanistan will be forgotten again because Afghanistan was in this situation 20 years ago when 11-9 happened, you know. And um, that was actually the time that a lot of international filmmakers came to Afghanistan and made trash movies about Afghanistan. And those films stand now as a reference for, I don't know, for how a long time, for a very long time. And I think this time, maybe it's time for Afghan filmmakers who has the possibility to making film to change those references. Because now, as you said, once again, Afghanistan is on the focus. And I think it's time to change this reference you know, with the knowledge of living in Afghanistan, with all the, you know, with like with the life experience, with everything, with watching all these bad films made by international, but also made by local, just to talk about Afghanistan in a different way, in a more deep way, you know. And I think that the bad thing about media is, like once the highlight is truly on, Af on, on, on Afghanistan or on any other country, but then imagine like Taliban will, I don't know, will, will, be, will stay in Afghanistan longer. And then we just accept it the way it is. And no more journalists or press are interested about Afghanistan. And this is very sad because, you know, like many people in Afghanistan, either they do not speak other languages, they do not speak English, so they cannot communicate with the world, or they are not expressive people. So they do not really share, they have not learned to share things, feelings, thoughts with other people. Even if they have the opportunity to talk or to speak, they are just simply cannot, they are just not able, you know. And um, for example, my own parents, they, you know, my, my father, he, he, he bought a house like years before when he was very young and he never could live in that house. He never could enjoy that house. He went to Iran because of war and he wanted to stay there only one month and he stayed there 40 years. And then in 2000, 2001, after 11 9 we moved back to Afghanistan. And then, like a month ago, my father left his country again for the second time. And it was really sad for me, you know, like, um, like it was really sad for me to, to see him because he's a farmer. And on the day, on the date that we left Afghanistan, it was the time that he was, he had these potato fields and it was the date that he's supposed to pick up the potatoes. And now he just, in the last month, he's just thinking about picking these potatoes. And it's just like, um, it's just very sad for me because uh, he never could exper express these feelings and this, you know, this trauma and he lived with that. And there are no many people that are like my parents and they cannot really talk about things. 
And I think this is the duty and responsibility of filmmakers, of artists, to talk about these suffers and this pain and this, you know, like stories and tales that they never had the chance to. And we are used to be introduced by other filmmakers, by international filmmakers, and we are used to look at us, ourselves, from the point of view of others, which there's no problem on this, you know? Everyone can talk about everything that they want. We live in a free world, let's say. And But the thing is, we don't have our own cinema industry now, at the moment. We don't have our own language of, of cinema. If for, if, for example, an American make a very bad film about Iran, the audience has the chance, has the opportunity to see um, the version of American filmmaker, how he look at Iran, and then at the same time, the point of view of Iranian filmmaker. So the audience is free to, you know, to understand, to get her, his or her own understanding. But with Afghanistan, that's not the case. You only see this bad film about Afghanistan by international filmmaker who got, I don't know, Oscar or Cannes or Bellinato or whatever. And you don't have the chance to see the, the other, other option, like an Afghan film. And I think now that Afghanistan is on the center, it is temporary. It will, people will forget it again. I, I'm sure, I bet. And um, it's just time for, 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 for Afghan artists to deeply look you know, inside and to talk about Afghanistan in a different way. And this needs a lot of courage and a lot of, you know, you, you, really sh you should really be really taking the challenges and because it's not really easy. It's not easy at all because you're talking about something that is not existed. And uh, you really have to find the right people to trust you and to to believe on on your art and on you as a personal, as an individual, you know, and to to yeah to to let you explore these thoughts and make uh, the final product. So yeah, I don't even know if I answered your question correctly. Yeah, thank you. I'm sorry, I don't seem that we have uh, time for another question, but. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and your knowledge with us. And we will see each other again. I thank you very much.